Hello folks, this is my favorite question. Fine. Should I prioritize accuracy or the number of attempts? Fine. It's a no-brainer question in my head. Fine. So there is a, there's no trade-off. You can't prioritize one over the other. Fine. One, of my, one of the TV series I watch, uh, which I'm a big fan of, is a thing called West Wing. There's the masterful uh, shooter, the, the Secret Service agent, and he's, 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 he's in the shooting range. And the lady bets with him saying, look, can you hit uh, it dead center. She says, I'll amp it up three out of five. And then he says, I'm fine. And then he pauses and says, why have you paused? And he says, what am I going to do to the other two? So it's not three out of five. He goes bang, bang, bang. So if you ask me, somebody has to go. So he hit three dead center. And then he doesn't know what to do with the other two. So he'll hit always dead center. That's how he's built. Right? So should I prioritize accuracy or the number of attempts? If you ask me, if I'm, if I'm doing quant, and you say, look, we're going to attempt 18 questions or 20 questions in this paper, being super ambitious, maybe over an hour, just a trial attempt. And you say, look, let's shoot to get 16 questions wrong, 16 questions right, and maybe four wrong. Uh, the guys who are really, really taking this seriously, who live and breathe this world, they'll be like, okay, which four am I getting wrong then? And so that's the world you need to live in. There is no trade-off between accuracy and speed. And so start with that world, super important. Be super hard on yourself for getting stuff wrong if you, if you, especially in quant you're not solving questions reaching a point and then uh, and then saying okay this answer choice is not there should I just mark B then you're just punting and so you can't take yourself to that point where you're punting and so uh, do, don't tell yourself that I have a trade-off variable especially early on and super important tell yourself that there is no trade-off between accuracy and speed, accuracy and number of attempts. That, that idea doesn't exist. If I'm attempting, I'm fully expecting this answer to be right. If it doesn't turn out to be right, it's a mistake. I've wrongly evaluated it. I got it wrong. I'm not taking a risk evaluation decision. I'm making a mistake. And so live in that world. And having said that, this is the second part of my question, where I'm second part of the answer, where I'm going to contradict what I said in the first part a little bit, not too much, a little bit. And so. This speaks to the idea of risk taking. And so the very, very uh, pet idea of uh, Jatin, my colleague, he says, look, the guys who can afford to take risk are the guys who have a high level of competency. The guys who end up taking risk are the guys who are at a low level of competence. And what he means is, if your typical average verbal score is 40 in that section, and you definitely get 32 to 33 in any paper, then you get language. Then when you're saying it is between A and C, it is definitely between A and C. And then if you further say, my cut feel is it is C, then there's a 75% chance that it is C. At that situation, it is absurd if you don't mark C. Because you mark 10 such Cs, you're getting 7 or 8 wrong, right, and that's a flying score. And so, the better and better you get at a section, the more your cut feel is for taking that little bit of chance and build that. You have to build that over time. You definitely need to have a complete handle on this paper with the idea that accuracy and, and speed are not variables to trade off on. And that's part, part one. After that, once you reach a place where you have a good handle and say, look, I, I, I think I got this, then you can say, can I take a little bit more risk? Even there, I would argue, at least I used to do this for all my mocks when I was preparing as a, as a student. I would attempt papers and then I would say, look, in verbal, I attempted 28 questions, 22 confidently, six were punts. In DI, I attempted 21 questions, 16 I'm sure of, 5 were punts. And I would assess my accuracy with two variables, two parts. First ones were what I fully believed were right, and second part was what I, where I was taking a chance on. If my fully believed was right, accuracy is upwards of 90%, I'm happy. This can fall either way. One mock can go totally your way, one mock can go totally against you. So you'll have to break down and evaluate your risk. But if you reach a level of competence where your system can stomach that risk, then you should take that risk. It pays off. It pays off on an average. It will pay off on the day. You should hope it pays off on the day. You cannot be completely risk averse and say, I'm not taking any chances, because then you're leaving something on the, on the table. But starting point being, look, I'm, I'm having a trade-off. More I attempt, the lesser my accuracy. Somewhere is a magical variable. It's a wrong way to approach it, because then you're attempting questions without a clear idea of, are you attempting it to get the mark, or are you attempting to increase the count? And so that is super important. Don't think these are trade-off variables. And so one, uh, one path on the journey, according to me, of when you're taking mocks is to have one zero error mock. One mock where you say, I'm going to attempt as few questions 
as I need to, but I'm not getting even a single question wrong. If you're getting five questions in logical reasoning, four in quant, one RC passage where you're leaving one question and two more verbal questions. So five, five, four. 14 questions is all I'll attempt. And, but all 14 are right, I'm getting 42. That's magical. One time you see a mock score where all the questions you've attempted are right, there's a switch that flips on and says, okay, this is the ball game. I shouldn't get errors. That's just a waste of time. And then you shift tack and then, then you can take risk and measure that risk and plan accordingly. So do a bunch of mocks where you think there's no trade-off, where you're very focused on accuracy. Get a focus on getting having one zero error mock somewhere and say, look, you sit and camp and get that zero error mock into your system. Then your competence increases. You're at a level where you can calculate, evaluate and plan for your risk. Then do that. That should help you over the long run. That should be your plan. But don't start off by saying, okay, at what accuracy and number of attempts do I get a maximum score? That's an absurd way to approach score, score calculation and evaluation. Keep that in mind. Best wishes again.